Welcome back, everyone. This is Ara Fallon playing Magical Bringer Corona the movie, The Wings of Pleiades arc. Last time, Subaru brought Balth home, got her saddled in. They got to know each other better. There's a bit of mayhem trying to get her into the bath. But then Corona turned up and they fear the worst. So the plan now is try to get Smuggle Balth out of there, get her to safety. Of course, that raises the question of... Where is safety? Going elsewhere. I don't have all that many acquaintances, though. Demons gather at Sakura Senpai's. Akira-san is in a university lab. So that leaves... So I should go to this Yuka Senpai's place? I'd said Yuka Amanogawa Senpai, but Lilith Chan went ahead and abbreviated it. Yes, even demons wouldn't interfere there without thinking twice. Sakura Senpai said she was headed there too, but I doubt she'd try anything around Amanagawa Senpai. Ah, huh. Yuka Senpai is that strong? Strong, yes. She's the strongest person I know. I didn't mean that as a lie. You can have all the power of the world and still be weak. True strength is something that only those who know that and can use it possess. It's up that hill, like I told you. I'll draw off the enemy's attention, so mask your presence, and whatever you do, don't fly. Roger. Her small body instantly vanished, like during her pranking yesterday. A normal human shouldn't be able to detect her without special sonar. Now, for my part. Corona, of course, is not a normal human. After circling broadly in the skies of the city, I activate my sonar. If my gut is right, the enemy will have spotted me flying around. If so, I'll be able to take advantage of that to draw their attention. The sonar pinged immediately. I can't visually confirm, but assume a demon from the strong signal. I try shifting 50 yards east. Good, they're following. Flying in the opposite direction of the hill where Balathchan headed, I commence diversionary tactics. Before long, I've touched down in some ruins on the outskirts of town. One demon has pursued me here. The diversion succeeded, but there's a high chance the mark will catch on soon and head right back. To be more certain that Belchamp will escape pursuit, I'm ready whenever you are. Oh, you notice me? Not making a sound is a selling point of a cat's footfalls, yeah? Looking to dig up the roots of a mountain yet? The unbreakable core Gleipnir? If I were to complete it, I'm sure I would want to tie you up. Gleipnir from Norse mythology is the chain that holds Fenrir bound, and because it was made for this seemingly impossible task, the dwarfs forged it out of six seemingly impossible materials, which include the sound of a cat's footfall and the roots of a mountain. Yeah, ha ha, point to you. By the way, one more question. Seen a green haired runt of a demon around? No. I see, I see. Then maybe I'm imagining things, yeah? But it positively reeks of this lingering smell of magic energy I couldn't sense yesterday, yeah? Coming from your body, and you're not supposed to have any magic energy. Nothing to say for yourself? Then I'll just have to make you talk, yeah? Now's your last chance to change the venue. You're not the only one who fights well in a three dimensional setting. Oh? No need to hold back, then. Time to settle things between us, yeah. And of course that means a fight, but of course that was Subaru's plan all along. She's trying to create a diversion, so what better way than to tie her up in a battle? Anyway, this is an early game, y'all. She does not have even the regeneration that she did in the battle against Corona on the uh, hike. She does not use Invisible Predator in this battle, either. The only time she can use that in this game is during that one battle with Corona. Which is why I went back and did it in free battle mode just to show how it worked. So we can get Double Fang Slicer in the battle, in this battle, 
but that's about it. Otherwise, this is pretty straightforward. Nyal has the low health and low stats of an early game opponent. Uh, difficulty level is still fairly go. We had some gain from fighting Belth, but not much. So at this point, we're probably at, uh, yeah, 32 probably, and should be at 39 after this battle because you can get up to 7 from Nyal, and I really shouldn't get hit. I'm a little bit off in the timing there. Oh yeah, there's really not much to say about this battle at this point. It's an early game fight. It's a fairly easy opponent. It's going to go pretty smoothly. Guard, 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 guard. She is a bit tougher and uh, stronger than Belleth is, considering she's supposed to be a fighter, whereas Belleth is basically a kid. But yeah, even since the previous game, Yaw was the least impressive in combat of the demons. Her biggest strong point was her regeneration and ability to just keep bouncing bat and come back and attacking over and over and over again. Now she didn't have regeneration in combat in that game, but she'd get beaten, come back the next day, come back again the next day, and just keep coming back over and over again. Whereas Krom, after being beaten in the first encounter, takes longer to recover, also takes more time to strategize and come up with an actual plan. Yaw basically just keeps throwing herself at you over and over again. Which is entirely in character. She's more the doing type and not so much the thinking type. Kind of like Corona. The drum flourish. Oh yeah, if this takes off half of what's left, then I'll quick burst to finish. Or maybe not. This shit goes up to thunder discharge. Yeah, let's go ahead and do thunder discharge to finish her off. Ooh, and we get to see double flying slicer as a bonus. Uriah! Special attack! Kick! I think we saw this with Corona. Yeah, a cat mangle could a king. That's, uh, insolence in the face of authority. Yeah, in Double Flying Slicers, you just get pairs of attacks, and that's about all there is to it. It's something different, but it's not especially difficult. Anyway, the cut-in for Thunder Discharge when you're playing as Playa is the same as when you're playing against Playa. Wrath of the Heavens, come forth! Then Hosha, Thunder Discharge, that. But, as a player character, it acts the same as Corona Blaster as a player character. So when you're trying to defend against it, you have to deal with an onslaught of tightly spaced things that are in random orientations. But when you're using it, it's all evenly spaced, all in the same direction. It's, again, exactly the same as Corona Blaster as far as input goes. It's not quite as strong, otherwise it's equivalent. Well, that settles that. My voice didn't reach her. There's nothing left anymore where the Therian vanished. Demons who take significant damage lose the power to remain in the human world and are forcibly banished to the demon realm. She's probably in Belzebeth Castle stomping around in frustration mode now. If she has the energy left, that is. I just had an unpleasant foreboding. She was able to stay here yesterday since I held back, but if I'd really wanted to, I ought to have been able to finish Belchan off. Enough damage would have forcibly banished her. It would be a quick and easy means of bringing back the fallen angel who escaped from the demon realm. If I were a demon pursuer, that would be the first thing I'd... No!
My foreboding hit the mark. Flashes burst a mid-air battle. Fighting with black wings spread is the little fallen angel. An immense sword exceeding human height is swung down mercilessly, and the fallen angel barely dodges. The huge sword's user, Sakura Senpai, swiftly goes in, sweeping the sword horizontally. Black feathers scatter from the girl who is blown away. Ow, that hurts! Server, save me! What? What does she think she's doing? Using the demon sword on a child with hardly any combat ability? Living with a demon lord must have warped her into becoming demonic. That does it. I rush the target at high speed. Electric energy generation charging. Charge, charge, charge. Electricity sparks from my body. This phenomenon is how the limiter curves energy exceeding my tolerance. Any further charging is pointless. I give the discharge command and focus electricity in my rod. If she's devilish enough to cut up a child, I won't show any mercy either. The condensed shock focused on my rod is roughly 37.5 million times what I use against normal people. It swells to 1,483 gigawatts, boasting a destructive capability no different from lightning. With the Black Demon Sword's user at hand and in my sights, I made a stepped leader. Streamers simultaneously extend from the target and join with it. Beams of light run along the lines. It takes just a millisecond. It's according to Wikipedia, a typical lightning strike peaks at somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 gigawatts, although it lasts for less than 300 thousandths of a second. Which makes that 1,483 gigawatts plausible for the equivalent of lightning strike, and this technical description of how lightning actually works also appears to be accurate. Anyway. Thunder Discharge. Unlike when we're praying as Corona, we don't actually go through the combat part of this. Probably mostly because we're not actually fighting at this point. That move! Could it be? I heard Belichan scream and came flying to look. What do you think you're doing, Sakura Senpai? You came for me, Subaru! I let Belichan cling to me. I don't see any serious wounds. Good thing I got here in time. In any case, what a fearsome person. I unleashed thunder at full power and she just slashed it away. You came to me with talk of a sudden trip, but it was actually at the instigation of the Demon Lord. I won't hunt it or Bell's Chan. Hey, wait a minute, Super Chan. I don't know anything about that. I'm pretty sure you're seriously misunderstanding things, and the trip's a coincidence, too. Misunderstanding or not, I didn't think you were such a cruel person as to strike such a small girl. It would seem that I must purge you after all. Uh, uh, yeah, but... No buts, I shall return both chance pain upon you. Yes, yeah, Subaru! Go get her! So that's it. I thought you seemed funny today, and you were hiding her. It's alright, I'll keep things secret from everyone. Who does she think she's fooling? That's not about to absolve you of bullying a child. Please prepare yourself. The surrounding atmosphere began crackling with electricity as I shouted at her. That would be the external emissions due to the charge limit. Ready, Belichan, take her distance behind me. I face Sakura Senpai and bring my rod to the ready. We haven't fought like this since then. It is precisely because you cannot be stopped by anyone that punishment must come upon you by my hand. And so, much like on the Corona story, we're fighting two battles in quick succession here, although obviously not the same two battles. This is also the first time that Corona, normal Corona, has appeared as an opponent. Obviously, Playa has the speed advantage. But we've never seen Corona as an opponent before, so... That leaves the question of what exactly she's going to bring as an opponent. It also means this neat new graphic of her with that ridiculously oversized sword. Anyway. Normal attacks are just normal, same as anyone else. No surprise there. However, Corona can use Corona Desperado in this battle, and is likely to since she won't go down quickly enough for her to end before that. 
Because already she's lasting significantly longer than y'all. Or... Yeah, you can see already that didn't take off as much of her health as it did of y'all's. So this will last longer. Also, we're having play as battle music, which is interesting. I'm not sure if it's particularly meaningful, but it is there. But anyway, as we know, Krona's not really trying super hard here. She doesn't really want to hurt anyone. She's not really guilty of anything beyond losing her temper at Belleth. So, she doesn't really want to fight. So, yeah. This isn't exactly a play fight, but Karna isn't taking it seriously. Playa, on the other hand, kind of is. Anyway, special is going as usual. Skip the intro. And yes. So, as I've noted already, the player version of Voltic Blade is very simple, straightforward, predictable, just like the player version of Corona Desperado. Uh, the enemy version, when you're trying to guard against Voltic Blade, has all that trickery where the chips change orientation, they jump around, they come fairly quickly. So, yeah, there's a lot of misdirection and trickery to that. But as the player version, it's essentially the same as Corona Desperado. So that raises the question, what does the opponent version of Corona Desperado look like? Because it really wouldn't make it sense for it to be equivalent to the enemy version of Voltic Blade, because Voltic Blade, with all its trickery and shenanigans, is a very playa kind of attack, whereas that kind of um, you know, sleight of hand, I guess you'd call it, just seems completely out of character for Corona. She's more of a straightforward, in-your-face, brute force kind of fighter. So it would make more sense if uh, enemy Corona Desperado is more of a straightforward, brute force, in-your-face kind of special attack. And wow, how did I miss that? I guess I'm not focusing well. Yeah, I'm trying to concentrate too much on the commentary and not enough on the fighting. Anyway, here we go. Here comes Corona Desperado. As with Playa Special, when you're playing with Playa as opposed to playing against Playa, the cut-in is entirely the same. Uh, same lines, same special effects, same everything. But then we get to the attack itself. And the attack itself is, uh, yeah. It's a straightforward brute force attack. Which again, as I was saying, that perfectly fits Corona's personality and fighting style. It's just kind of... Strike, 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 strike. Coming at you hard and fast, but nothing particularly complicated about it. I'm going to Quick Burst to a Voltic Blade, which should finish her off. Although there is one thing I forgot to highlight there. Uh, when you're playing as Corona, you get to level 2 on your energy bar. If you keep attacking, uh, not with Corona Blaster, obviously, but if you keep attacking, the bar keeps charging, you eventually get up to level 3. That does not happen when you're playing with Playa. When you're playing with Playa, as soon as you get to level 2, you stop charging. As she mentioned before the battle, there is a limiter system in place that prevents her from charging to dangerous levels. Once it gets to that point, any excess just dispels harmlessly into the atmosphere. And as an actual gameplay effect, you cannot charge Playa's special meter beyond level 2. It just won't charge anymore at that point which makes Quick Burst more attractive for her than it does for Corona because you can't get to the whole three. There is no Corona gun blazing. So you might as well just keep using your specials, uh, do the Quick Burst to get extra turn, get an extra Volta Blade in, 
charge back up, and repeat. In any case, that's been two battles in one session. There's some amount of wrapping up the chapter left to go, so I think I will stop this here. For now, this has been Aerophone playing Magical Bringer Corrida the Movie, the Wings of Pleiades chapter. Come back next time and see what Pleia makes of the aftermath of the battle. Hope to see you then!